Give the Lord a big hand. You may be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to take time to teach again this morning and then we trust God for a more revival session later tonight. And I believe there will be a remarkable shift in the life of someone in the name of Jesus. Last night I began to consider the subject of spiritual upgrade and I told us there are three major things that defines upgrade in the life of a man. I said the first is transition. I said the second is transformation. And I said the third is transfiguration. Because when your life is upgraded, your value systems will change, your realm or your spiritual location will change, your mindset will change, and even your essence, your physical essence will be impacted. Glory to God. And so this is what upgrade characterizes. And as we looked into the word of God last night, first of all, we were able to affirm that upgrade is a possibility. And so I showed you from the life of fishermen that Jesus turned to global and transgenerational phenomenon. And having established that, I went further to show us the spiritual resources that makes for upgrade. And so I spoke about the blessing, I spoke about encounters, I spoke about prophetic words, and I also spoke about the necessity for us to study and to enhance ourselves with information, with secrets, and with mysteries. Glory to God. And I said, for you to be able to articulate these realities and to experience them, there is a responsibility on your part. And so I said, the first responsibility is prayer. If you don't pray, you may likely not have encounters. Glory to God. If you don't pray, you may likely not have access to mysteries, secrets, and information in the spirit. And then I went further. I said in the natural, you also have to study. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved unto God, the watchman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I said study is important. And then I went further to also emphasize the need to connect to men that carry superior dimensions. Because whatever God is doing with you, when you look around you, there are people who is doing greater things. And as you connect to them, you see that you begin to draw for iron, sharpened iron, as a man, the countenance of his friend. And the Bible says to follow them, who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Glory to God. And so I touched that yesterday. Having touched that, I went further to also make on this realm. And then number three, the power and the authority of God. If you are upgraded, these three dimensions will be activated in your life. The essence of God, the wisdom of God, and the power of God. This morning, I want to teach us the sequential steps we must ascend as we translate into God's essence. Because there are steps you get to if you are becoming like God. And there are indicators that show that you are migrating on those steps. Every Christian who is upgrading must go through these three routes. You must carry God's nature or essence and manifest it. You must function in God's power and you must function in God's wisdom. In the evening, I will talk about power. But this morning, let's talk about his essence so that we know how to migrate until when men see us, they will see God. That's the true meaning of upgrade. Listen, some of you, as you go back to your office, people will know something has changed about you. Not because you said anything. Not because you went and started preaching. Yes, it's good to preach. But listen, if you are a preacher and your life does not reflect it, you are a scammer. Somebody said, we must always preach and if necessary, use words. That means your life preaches more than your words. If all your preaching is with words, you can be a theologian or a scammer. The true message comes from your life. You must become like God. You must metamorphose into his nature until he can be seen through you. That's the truth. That's the first meaning of upgrade. It means you are entering the God class because your essence is becoming like the essence of God. But there are three levels of migration into this realm. And when you enter here, you have become a son. Because this is where sonship begins from. You know, when we say sons or sonship in Christianity or in the spirit context, 
We are not talking about male Christians. <laughs> when we say somebody is a son, in spiritual context, we are talking about four things. Number one, somebody who can reveal God. He said, God who has sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, as in this last day spoken to us by his son. Hebrews 1 from verse 1 to 3. Who being, who he appointed heir of all things and by whom also he sustained the world. He said, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. When people look at you and say, are you a man of God? You know that you are becoming a son. They can perceive God through your life. You can stand somewhere, you are not talking. Somebody looks at you and says, Carl, there's something about this person. I can sense divinity in him. That's a son. Because glory can be perceived. If you have it, it shows. When you become a son, you are led by the Spirit of God. You are not led by human opinion. There are many opinions in the earth. Especially if you go on social media, you will find a lot of them. And many people are fluctuating in life based on public opinion. And so their whole life, their whole decision comes from the court of public opinion. Those are children. Because you have the life of God, you are a child of God. But you become a son. I beat my body. I bring it under subjection. I control my tongue. My tongue doesn't say what I feel. It says what it should. That is perfection. It's a realm of maturity. Paul said when you understand the unity of the faith, you have the knowledge of the Son of God, then you become a perfect man. Listen, as you walk out of this conference, you must come to a point where your emotions don't lead you. The Holy Ghost and the world should be your leader. It's a sign of maturity. There are some of us here, it's food that controls us. The guy wakes up in the morning, it's, it's 7 a.m., he wants to die. Hey, hey, hey. And he's looking for, by 12, he has eaten three times. He has eaten maize, he has eaten moi moi and pap, and then he's now on rice and beans. And then you ask him, say, my brother, we have to enjoy you. This life, we won't live here for long. Bro. You are joking. You don't know what you are doing. You can't tame your flesh. You think you can become anything in God. The first man fell because of appetite. You want to become like Christ? This is the protocol. This is the protocol. This is the protocol. And this is what Paul taught us. He said, if we will be like Christ, we must pass through this channel. But most of you who are here, have you not noticed that in your walk with God, there were many seasons that God restricted you from many things? I told you yesterday, it's not a doctrine. It's your own growth syllabus. There were times when I woke up in the morning, I wanted to eat. It was like a sin. Eat what? Are you joking? There's a war, a generation waiting for you. You think those who eat like you can rule the world? There were things I loved. God stopped me. I used to be a football fan, very dangerous analyst. I can sit down and analyze records of football for 40 years without consulting any document. I will give you dates, dates. I will tell you who scored, who didn't score. I will analyze it. But the point came, those appetites had to go down. Now, there's nothing wrong with watching football. If I come now and say, don't watch football, I'm a legalist. But my ordination did not permit it. Because that appetite was becoming an idolatry. I was worshipping it. Saturday, we can't wait for Saturday. Before 12, we're in the studio. Because you don't only watch your club. You have to watch every other club because we are analyzing the whole league. And predicting the outcome. And you want to be an apostle to the nation? Where will you have time to download scrolls? Because there are certain downloads that take one month. Oh, you don't know how the spirit realm works times when God wants to share something with you the first one week there's a movement on your heart that God wants to talk a whole week you will just be feeling that God wants to talk that's he will use a whole week and that whole week he will put you on a prayer schedule you have legal matters like intimacy with your wife he says set yourself apart and seek God it's not a sin but you should have sufficient authority when God needs your time those are the men that grow into Christ and the reason we are not raising people who can grow into Christ is because we are not teaching them these things. So when they are happening, they don't know. You wake up in the morning, you want to eat, it's like seeing. You don't even know what it means. 
You don't know that you, you are being initiated into a summon. God wants to come and you don't need fleshly powers. So he's telling you this season, you can't eat when you want. You eat when you are permitted. But you have not been taught. And so many seasons can be aborted because people don't have understanding. There are seasons where you want to call a friend, God stops you. Not because there's anything wrong in making friends, but you don't need noise. This is the time when echoes are coming from eternity. You cannot hear opinions. So God shuts you out of friends. And some may be offended at you, but you can't help it. You are a man of the spirit. These are how men grow into Christ. You want to grow into Christ, you will learn this. The wise master builder was the one who taught us these blocks of spiritual maturity. Please sit down. Ah, my time is up. Let's pray. <laughs> I just looked up, maybe in the evening. But I want to talk about power in the evening because I will, we have to manifest some things. Otherwise, we'll be lecturers. <laughs> We have, to, we have to manifest some things in the evening. So I will talk about power. But in case you want to go and do further studies, when you reach this level, the, third, the fourth level, the fifth level, is that you are not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You come to a point where you study sufficiently and you understand truth in context. So people don't wake up and you hear things. Every, there are some Christians that every four years they believe new things. The Bible said they are tossed to and fro by winds of doctrine. That means they don't have understanding in the spirit. So men can use shallowness, cunningness, craftiness to toss them like the wave. And such men don't have gravity to be like Christ. Number six, he said, speaking the truth in love. There's, there are many things I can tell people, but I, I'm not just out to speak the truth. The goal of speaking the truth is to build you up, not to destroy you. If I tell you truth and it destroys you, it means I didn't say it in love. Because God rebukes us. God chastises us. But when God rebukes and chastises us, it leads to repentance and transformation. We are in a generation where people want to tell you things to discredit you. People claim they want to, they want to correct you. Well, they are correcting you so that you are discredited and you will never come back. There's no love in it. And people who can even reach you and pray with you, they will never call you and pray with you. They will take you to the public so that everybody will know who you are, that you are, before you are falling. So they remove the possibility of you repenting. Now, there are those who are wolves that we need to make an example of if God gives us permission. But that is not that, it's not that every time we are happy when people fall, something is wrong with us. And some of us have suffered for, from bitterness for too long that we, we are happy when people are destroyed. And we think it's gospel we are doing. Something is wrong. Truth is spoken in love. Because that thing you want to tell that brother, ask yourself, if the person is your biological relationship, relation, will you say it to him that way? That thing you want to tell that man, if that man was your biological father, will you tell him that way? That thing you want to tell that woman, if that woman is your biological mother, will you tell her that way? That thing you want to tell that brother, if that brother were your biological son, will you tell him that way? If you can't do it to somebody else the way you do it to your biological family, it means you are a hypocrite. Most of us who jump out and say, this person is a thief, this one is a liar. Meanwhile, we have never corrected any of our biological family members like that. I know some of them are not public figures, so there's no room to do that. But even in the family context, we don't do it. Why is it that we want to do it like that in the body of Christ? Something is wrong. Truth must be spoken in love so that those who hear are corrected, they, are, they repent, and they are helped to come back. He said, when we do this, then Ephesians 4.15, he said, we will grow into him in all things, even Christ, the head of the church. So the goal of God is for us to grow into Christ so that every one of us, when they see us, they will see Christ. This is the first level of upgrade. When you are upgraded, you become like Christ. And this is where the apostles got to. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow me as I follow Christ. John said in 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world, not in heaven, in this world. 
And so when men begin to truly enjoy upgrade, they... Ah, ah, ah. Listen, wherever you are, God can make a difference. Paul said, I continue to this day, not because I'm strong, say because the Lord has helped me. We continue because we are helped. I'm telling you, nobody standing is standing because he's strong. Everybody standing is standing because they are helped. He said, unto him that is able to keep us from falling. He is able to keep us. He said he saves to the uttermost because he maketh intercession for us. That's why we are standing. Your coming out this morning is a testimony of total dependence of God on God. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their evil way, repent and pray. He said, I will hear them. I will come down and heal their lands. Place your hand on your chest and make a commitment. Spirits are legalistic beings. They make, they respond to our commitments. That's how they work. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe he died for my sins. He rose from the dead for my justification. I confess with my mouth today that he's my Lord and Savior. Father, I rededicate myself to you. I ask that by the Spirit of Christ, cause me to stand for you and cause me to grow into the fullness of Christ. By all means, let the works of darkness end in my life. Let the works of the flesh be subdued in my life. And let the Spirit have its way. From this day forward, I surrender everything about me to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Precious Father, I pray for your children. You see, if we are not ashamed of you before men, you will not be ashamed of us before your heavenly Father. Unto him that is able to keep us from falling, and he 